I'm Mitchell Hardens Bishop. I'm the associate curator for the non-living collections here at the Los Angeles County Arboretum and Botanic Garden. This building will be familiar with many of you from television and film, most notably Fantasy Island, I think. Parks and Recreation Department actually has a number of really remarkable buildings that we are the custodians for. This building in particular, the Queen Anne Cottage, was built 1885-1886 by Elias J. Baldwin, or Lucky Baldwin, a nickname he hated. His architect for the project was a gentleman named Albert Austin Bennett. And the building was built as a guest house for the ranch, and also it would be regarded today as a kind of an event space where people would gather for playing cards, dancing, listening to music, having something to eat or a drink. And as such, you know, it was, it was a focus of recreation. Baldwin created the place as a showpiece for the ranch. He planted a number of exotic plants and trees, um, which the climate of Southern California made possible. And at that time, people were very interested in exotic plants and trees and the kinds of things that could be grown here that they could not grow at home. In the 1880s, many people were moving to the area, and Baldwin also intended to sell parcels of the property to people moving out to the area. So he was subdividing the ranch as well, which was enormous. He bought the ranch in 1875 from a gentleman named Harris J. Newmark, who was a prominent person in the history of Southern California and Los Angeles. The ranch, Rancho Santa Anita, was owned by actually a number of famous people in the history of Southern California, all of them quite remarkable in their own way. The site for the cottage was very carefully considered. Uh, in a newspaper article, Baldwin told the reporter that he had a hundred Chinese workers working on digging out the lake. So it's reasonable to conclude that they dug the lake down to what was then a depth of about 15 to 17 feet, it seems. And also, I believe he shaped the shoreline to create a certain look that he wanted. One of the things they did was they basically put the cottage on a kind of peninsula jutting out into the lake. This meant that there were wonderful views of the lake from the veranda of the cottage and from the tower as well. The lake was both a ornamental feature in the garden, but it also served a practical purpose as a reservoir. And they did go boating on the lake and presumably swimming and fishing as well. The cottage is an unusual building. It's called the Queen Anne Cottage, which refers to a style of Victorian house, but in actual fact, it has elements of stick style, and also it has a little bit of the feeling of a pagoda. Baldwin did travel in the Far East, and he would have been familiar with Far Eastern architects, so I think he brought some of that sensibility back with him and discussed it with the architect. The coach barn is similar in design, but the cottage is, of course, unique. At the time, they would have gone up in the tower, probably both to catch a breath of air in the summertime, but also to admire the view, the snow on the San Gabriel Mountains. Um, at that time, the air was clear, and they could often see at quite a distance from the top of the tower. There was a bell, which also probably would have been used to summon people to the cottage for various purposes. People often remark that there's no kitchen in the cottage, but of course, at that time, they would have had a kitchen elsewhere, and servants would have brought them whatever they wanted. There were a great number of people living and working in the immediate area at the time, so it wasn't a question of just feeding Baldwin and his guests. They would have been feeding the ranch hands as well. Baldwin actually lived across the lake at the Adobe, which is where he spent his time. Um, he had a small kitchen over there, and it was at that time a sort of an L-shaped structure with a garden, a Victorian strolling garden in the middle. At the very beginning, when the Arboretum was founded, it was intended that it would be both a botanic garden, a scientific institution, and a historic site. 
and the California Arboretum Foundation was founded specifically to be a partner with the county in that. Um, the intention always was that the burden of restoration and maintenance would be shared by both partners. At some point in the beginning, the state of California was also involved in the project, but later on, they kind of bowed out and deferred and left it to the county and the Arboretum Foundation. It's a partnership that's been quite successful. When the restorations were being done, they pulled together a committee for the purpose of overseeing the projects, and it contained a number of very notable people who we owe a debt of gratitude today for their expertise and their work. One of the things that's so great about this building and the barn is, is that the buildings not only are conserved and in beautiful condition, but we've preserved the setting as well, which is fairly unique. In the past, the emphasis was on simply preserving the structure and less attention was paid to the setting around the structure. But in fact, both the barn and the cottage, as well as the surrounding gardens, are on the National Register for Historic Sites, which is quite an honor. The highest designation possible in the historic register. Um, so, although the trees are much larger than they would have been at Baldwin's time, we still have preserved the flavor of the Victorian garden. It's possible to come here and spend time and feel as if you're in another time and place. And what's really nice is on a summer morning like this, you can pull up a wicker chair on the railing and take a look at the lake and relax and enjoy the morning.